Tattoo Tabletop here. This one uh, coming up is the podcast that I did with Andrew Johnson. Obviously, stay tuned for that. I just wanted to point out it's going to be visually boring. We meant to get some more uh, dynamic shots, stuff like that. Unfortunately, things happened, and so we just kind of had the one main working camera. Um, so, you know, pop in your headphones, give it a good listen. Otherwise, uh, hey, stay tuned. Welcome to Tattoo Tabletop. My name is James, and as you can see today, we're doing something rather special. We have a guest oh. with us. His name is Andrew, but we can also call him Dewey J, because realistically, that's actually like the name I kind of thought you actually had. I was like, oh, you know, like he's maybe a Dewins or a Deward. I don't know what Dewey names <laughs> a, a is. Dusef? Yeah, Dusef, whatever. <laughs> um, so, for those of you who don't know who Andrew is, he is... Probably one of the most accomplished painters that I've seen. But if you've referred to some of my previous videos, you'll know that one of my goals is to win a golden ticket to Warhammer Worlds. And I am sitting next to a man who won a golden ticket. And which event was that for again? It was Kansas City Open. The Kansas City Open. So basically, he was able to win that via best overall, which mm -hmm. rightfully earned. We, again, I will have his Instagram linked in the <laughs> description below. Go check that, like all of his, like, like all of his, actually everything, like every picture you have, like just flood him with likes. There's only like 70, so. There's, it's, 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 yeah, it's not too bad. It's not too bad. But I wanted to, I wanted to take this time to interview someone who has won the golden ticket, the coveted golden ticket. And even before Aww. that, we had planned this so many months in advance. And in that time, he also won best over or best hobby for mm -hmm. LVO. Mm -hmm. Las Vegas Open. Talk to Duncan Rhodes. <laughs> Duncan Rhodes actually looked for him. Like, where is he? He's in the bathroom. Gotta find that dude. Dude's got business. Dude, he has business. <laughs> There's one hour between rounds, and you gotta pick and choose. You really do. If you don't do that, then it's then it's really problematic. I chose poorly. It's you know <laughs> we all do what we can. Yeah. So I thought to myself, let's interview a golden ticket winner and let's find out what makes them tick. So. Dewey, Andrew, introduce yourself to the people. Tell, let, let them know a little bit more about yourself besides the fact that you're a champion brush licker. Ooh, yeah, I'm a bit of a brush licker. I definitely do that. I mean, um, don't don't we all? Don't we yeah. all? Paint is, paint is tasty. I don't it's, know. A, it's, just, it's, it's good for the bones. Yeah. Or not. We don't know yet. Yeah, we'll find out in we'll, 10 years. We'll find so. out. Just like, actually, Citadel was the <laughs> primary cause of, you know. Multiple deaths. Tongue cancers. <laughs> Not good, but mm, embrace yeah. it. Yeah, let the people know who who, who, who are you. Uh, well, my name's Andrew Johnson. I've been playing Warhammer since 2022, essentially. Okay, very nice. Um, I started painting back in 2020 during the pandemic, and my parents were talking about throwing away my box of Warhammer stuff from childhood, and this is like 2019, and I was like, no, God, <laughs> the memories, the nostalgia, and then I picked it up, and I was running like a pretty extensive D, D campaign at the time and i was like man maybe i should pick up legions in the gash because there's a lot of skeletons in the campaign but also i could start playing warhammer potentially and then i stopped playing D D and just started playing warhammer <laughs> but after painting for like a year i decided that i wanted to actually start competing so I started going to a local tournament and played one here and then i went to the chicago u.s open in 2022 and Met my good friend Joe Cryer, and he stayed in my room randomly. I had no clue who he was, and he was that like, weird homeless looking dude. Yeah. <laughs> just, just like you can tell that hot topic of just like lost lost his box. Yeah, <laughs> sorry, like, Joe. Can I stay in your room? I'm like, yeah. He's like, can four other people stay? I'm like, no, <laughs> no. <laughs> but now I would have let him because that's how it, that's uh, how it goes. Of course, <laughs> and he eats he eats the last donuts. Can confirm. Oh, don't leave donuts around him. Confirm. He, yeah. He'll just, especially when you're just like, oh, I'm really craving that glazed donut right now, and he's like, Bro, I thought I gave it to you. <laughs> it's like, No, you did no, not. He's the perpetrator. I, sure. I witnessed that. <laughs> that is that is confirmed. Donut eater. Um, yeah. yeah, perfect. So let's just dive into the the questions, Sweet. shall we? So of course we talked about it a little bit there on your introduction, but mm -hmm. how did you really get into Warhammer and what was your first experience? It sounded like you started in 2019. Yeah, like well picked up my models 2019, and then it was like lockdown that officially got me into painting and getting a little more time to do it. But it goes way back to like probably 2000, 2001, and my friend Kirk when I lived in Canada got me into Warhammer and 
he was like, man, check out these like really cool models. And it's like, at the time he was playing orcs and goblins and I picked up a lizardman box and started painting up lizards. And then he started painting up space bulls. And then I was like, well, I'm going to paint Eldar. And then, you know, trying to fund a Warhammer campaign off of a paper route is difficult. Understandably. But, you know, we made it work and we played a couple terrible games, I'm sure. <laughs> None of them <laughs> were regulated in any sort, yeah. but, you know, it was fun and we loved it. Yeah, I mean, no one knows the rules the first time around in any no. in any capacity. You watch like 8 million battle reports and you're like, I think I get it. And yeah. then you play it and you're like, okay, I don't remember anything. Yeah, like, you tell me you read the rules before you tried playing. Yeah, it's just like, okay, there's a magic phase. Does that happen now or later? Like, which one? I'm going to put all 8 of these artifacts on this one character <laughs> yeah that's that's usually how about how it goes like so let me ask too just kind of an addendum to that so did you get like an earlier exposure even before that like was it something it was in your like peripheral or was it something that like that's when you saw it and when you saw it you're like done um it was yeah not much more exposure aside from like my friend showing it to me and then like i moved down in the states and like lost that connection and stopped playing but like dawn of war and like all the like the video games and yep. stuff that came out, Fire Team and stuff, like played that and like absolutely loved it and I kept up with the lore over the years, but I didn't get back into the models until later. Yeah, that was that was about the same for me. I remember picking up Dawn of War not understanding what Warhammer forty K was. I just played Age of Empires, I played oh, yeah. all the strategy games, and I saw that there was a new strategy game and I was like, These look interesting and neat and unique and neat and stuff and so I just like leaned into it and ta da Turns out it's still fun, too. Yeah, and then, you know, 14 armies later. Yeah. <laughs> Oops. Uh, yeah, it's it's okay. <laughs> there's there's a lot that is painted, so yeah. there's there's a redeeming quality. Well, you got that. <laughs> mm -hmm. But, yeah, so that sounds like that's pretty, pretty standard there. So, I mean, speaking, you know, kind of transitioning into that specifically, what would you say is, like, your favorite part of, like, Warhammer? Is it, like, the lore? Is it the painting that you so expertly do or like which one really like kind of hits home for you specifically i mean it's definitely the lore that like kept me going and kept me connected over the years like oddly enough it's 40k that i followed a lot more than fantasy or anything like that like i didn't know the end times and so i started playing age of sigmar <laughs> so yeah. it's like didn't know any of that happened until i started but it was the painting that really got me going. Like, I love just taking the time to sit down for a couple hours and just, like, sit there and focus and, like, concentrate my ADHD into one <laughs> little funnel and just, like, funnel. produce these, like, amazing-looking little skeletons. That's, yeah. I mean, I think I think everyone can kind of, like, connect with, like, the therapeutic nature of, mm -hmm. like, painting. Because even someone, like, I would... Now I'm probably more, you know, I've, I've gotten better after painting more and more and more. But, like... Mm -hmm. I remember thinking, like, there's no way I can do this. I can't draw. I can't color in the lines. <laughs> yeah. Like, how am I expected to paint this? And I remember doing, like, the very first, like, painting seminar from uh, from Games Workshop. Like, I went to the store and everything. And I just remember, like, the Getting moment. Free mini. Yeah, the moment, like, painting that, like, I was painting the Stormcast Eternal at the time. And I just remember, like, painting that and just being like, I don't have any anxiety right now. This is a feeling I am unfamiliar with. And I feel good about it. And I feel so good about Even it. Even when it looks like shit back then. It's oh. like, oh, I still feel good about it. And it looks great. And I'm feeling accomplished. Yeah, you, like, and... paint, you paint in, like, the shoulder pad. And you're like, I did it in the lines. <laughs> What a good job. Slap that first coat of nolan oil on and you're like, oh man, I'm, I'm an, really good at this. Look I'm at an this. expert. <laughs> and then you look up, you know, Darren Latham and like all the other guys and you're just like, oh, i uh just kidding. It's kind of like learning to play the guitar and then just Googling like Japanese prodigy and you see some like six year old just play through the just fire and schooling. flames. Yeah. You're like, all right, I don't know why I picked up this instrument to begin with. <laughs> I'm done. I'm over no, it. I'm, I'm done. I'm just, I'm just going to play gorilla riffs, as I like to call them, <laughs> in the hardcore on the hardcore variety. Um, so obviously like, the painting pulled you in, and you talked about the skeletons. And obviously, if you're looking at Dewey J's Instagram right now, skeletons are his strong point. And is that like the faction that like pulled you in first, or was there another one that kind of like vied for front? I mean, Stormcast, I thought, were like pretty cool looking. In the Sigmarines or whatever, like they just look awesome. Like they I do. love the Dracolines. Like I'm still slowly building up an army of them, but like they just look awesome. The Evocators and stuff like that. But somewhere I fell in love with the undead. And don't we just all? like I don't know. 
Neferata, she's just amazing. She's beautiful. She's like ferocious. She's confident. Like Vampire like, Bay. Yeah. Damn. Ah, yeah. She she really Bay. carries it. Unfortunately, I think my my first uh, my first affection with them is unfortunately Manfred, mm. as we all know, is Trade a giant scum. He's a giant turd. Yeah. <laughs> He's he is responsible for the end times, rightfully so. But you know, here we here we are, and say la vie, guys. I still thought he was cool. Yeah, like he little, still is cool. I mean, he's awesome, <laughs> dude. His cinematic for Total War Warhammer was like pulled me in immediately because it's like the witch hunter like making his way through, oh, yeah. and he's like, "Where are you, Von Karstein?" And like the banshee shows up and just like he starts lifting them up from the oh yeah, it was pretty oh. good. That was the Total War Warhammer sold me in like a heartbeat. I built a computer for Total War Warhammer because I played all the Total War games, and I was like, I heard that Warhammer is nerdy. I'm a nerd. Checkmate. Yeah. <laughs> Just done. It's got to add up. It's got to add up somewhere. It's got to happen. <laughs> All right. So, of course, you know, like we said, we're specifically here to find out how it happened, mm -hmm. how you how you reached out and seized greatness. How did you win the golden <laughs> ticket? Well, it was a bit of a strategic pick for tournaments to go to. Um, there were quite a few going on at the same time as U.S. Kansas City Open, and there was, like, less than 20 people in the AOS single. So it was, like... Pretty good chance, you there's, know. <laughs> so you're saying there's a chance. <laughs> yes, yes, we were. Also, Soulblight had just come out with a brand new book at that point, and it turns out it was above average. Yeah. Um, <laughs> mm, I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> Recursion? I think the list I won with at that tournament is now like, over 250 points more expensive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, recursion good. is good. Recursion Getting is good. Getting back is great. And being able to steal objectives from people at the end of the turn by bringing things back is also good. That is true. Can confirm that is that is 100% the uh, the route to go there. So, fair enough. What was your record for the for that tournament? Uh, I did go 4 and 1. So very I did nice. I did I played very well. Uh, I lost one game by 2 points. Um which was a great game. It was a mirror match, and I just got a little hasty, and I w over calculated what Neferata could do, and I needed to heal one point with her to complete a battle tactic, and then I activated her after he activated his Nef, and his Nef killed mine. And yep. I lost that battle tactic, and then lost the match. <laughs> I mean, that's got to feel good, though, to get to have that close of a game, yeah. like lose it on a mirror match. I imagine that was a really fun game to play. Oh, totally. Because, yeah, it's just like two vampires like vying for power. Like it, come, It's in, cool. Like, the prime of their book, too. So oh, it's, like, absolutely. Pretty brutal match, but if I would have won that, I probably would have lost to Fred in the end anyway, so. That's fair. That's, that's I mean, that's very fair. Well, who were some of the other opponents that you played in that match or in the in that tournament? Oh, man, I played against Derek Hildebrand for sure. I always get matched up against him in my final game, which is kind of fun. It's like two times in a row at Kansas City, but love that guy. Um, I played against someone who was actually a, a cheater, which I won't say uh, who it was, but that was unfortunate. They lied about their list, and they misled me, and I actually ended up losing the game and a battle tactic over it. And then later on, checked the list and found out he was a liar, and I went and oh. talked to the judges, and... They were going to wait to catch his side of the story, but he ended up dropping, and they were like, okay, well, we've heard things about this guy in the past, so we just flipped the grand strat because it was an even tie, and they gave me the one. So. Oh, okay. Yeah, I mean, never fun when you run into a situation like no. that, but, I mean, it sounds like you, you handled it perfectly. You know, With us nerds, there's no fisticuffs really no. involved ever. No. We're not going to fight anyone over Warhammer. <laughs> we we do that verbally in yeah. chat rooms. I'm going to talk about you behind your back. <laughs> I am brave. I'm just let me let's, let me tell you about some yeah, stuff. Yeah, I'm brave. Me. I'm brave. <laughs> but I, I mean, my shambling hordes, <laughs> just like ah, oh, they're so finicky. <laughs> Not the glue, <laughs> the plastic glue. I've I've built enough death rattle skeletons. I'm like I'm done. I, I, oh, as, as much as if as much as I would like some more death rattle skeletons, it's not happening anytime in the future. He probably could have doubled my army in the amount of time I've spent repairing spears and arms. Yep. Yeah, because that's not an option. It's not like, oh, you can pick either one or the other. It's like, no, you're going to have some spears. You're going to have a banner, and it's going to be on this little bone arm. This is going to be like... And then you just look at it. It's like... <laughs> I, who, oh, someone's... One of my... Oh, one of my blood knights 
is just like pointed down because I've stabbed myself so many times grabbing it oh, from yeah. the top. <laughs> my blood knights have drawn blood. So yeah. that that checks out. That tracks out. I mean, they're not blood knights until they do. You can't even be mad about it. Can't even. They healed themselves, actually, as yeah. I stabbed myself. They're just like, oh, I'm back up to full. <laughs> I told my opponent and everything. It goes back up. <laughs> it just goes right back up. It's perfect. All right. So obviously you talked a little bit about the kind of a little bit of the experience, but like as like you mentioned, there was some strategy in choosing what events you were going to. Mm-hmm. So compared to some of the other events that you've gone to, if you want to list a few, like what was kind of your experience there specifically at Kansas City versus some of the other ones that you may have attended? Uh, well, it was definitely a much smaller pool of people. I mean, there was a team event going on at the same time, and there was a lot of like players that I've known about and that do very well historically in tournaments that were playing in the teams, but not the solo matches. So it was like kind of a relief in that sense like oh god here's these amazing players that aren't in competition with me but you know it was still like fun like my first gt i went to the u.s um chicago open like i ended up taking third overall just oh, barely lost to like anthony trentinelli so it was like that was a pretty great success just for a first one but i mean like definitely a smaller pool of people like i had more understanding of like how to play the game at that point too but yeah it was a uh, it was good. Yeah. I mean, and also just kind of for people, you know, anyone who might not have gone to any sort of events, you know, what do you think kind of separates a GW event from like a frontline gaming event or something like that? Is there anything that you like kind of pick out in particular? Well, for me personally, it's I, the people I know that are running the events, like I've connected with these people a lot more now. So it's like fun to go and see the people running the GW events because they're my friends and yeah. It's always great to see what they're putting on, and I think they set up great tables, and I love the distancing that they have on tables. I love that you can walk around them, and you're not running into people. You always have a chair. Oh, it's so perfect. Uh, The fact that we came out of Tampa, my voice was intact. I didn't have to take like Advil at all. Like uh, Before that, my previous experience was like LVO where you have to, like, walk around, like, six tables to get to the other side. Like, you're, if you're just sitting there. Oh, middle. God, we've all been in the middle when you have, uh, like, eight on each side, and you're like, okay, I'm going under. <laughs> yep. My my personal table is I pull out the terrain, the terrain tup, like, Tupperware, essentially, as I call it, the terrain Tupperware, pull it out, I'm like, and my tray is going to sit on this, yep. and I am just going <laughs> to, nope, this is this is my spot. This is my thing. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, and I mean, having gone to the Tampa, I the Tampa Open, I loved the Tampa Open. Oh yeah, it was, it was great. It's awesome. I only my only complaint was with the resort fees because you know we didn't have a working pool, but that's not on them. Yeah. And and who? How are the we? The guy just, brings a speedo down to Florida, and he uh, can't even wear it once. Cannot well, even a, in what, the pool. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you could. Yeah, yeah some more. I mean, if you would have rocked it yeah. at the, I don't. Uh, they might have asked you to leave. I had Zubas on. They was like, you they know, were, they, the Zubas were for perfect. <laughs> they were perfect for that. But yeah, I mean, obviously, you know, when it's the fact that we were down there in October and it was like ninety some odd degrees, some yeah. days was just terrifying. Terrifying that it actually got that high. Yeah, but say la vie. Um, so, you know, kind of speaking from even just that first one, you kind of talked about some of the matches that you went through, but like, what was probably your favorite match from, from that event specifically? It sounds like you, I mean, you've been paired into the (laughs) one friend, the one guy repeatedly. What was was his name again? Uh, Derek Hildebrand. Derek, Derek. So like, I assume that he's always fun. Was he kind of still, he was still, was he still kind of the favorite? Cause you guys just matched into each other again. At the Kansas city open. Yeah. Yeah, I'd say that was probably one of my more favorite matches I played. I mean, I played against Martin Orlando, like always have a great time playing against him and his beautiful armies. So like he was running, uh, his slaves, the darkest darkness list. So Baron guard and stuff, tough match, just barely pulled off another win. But that was a, that was a good one too. That's all, yeah, I mean, that's always good. Was there, like, a particular moment that kind of, like, stands out to you? Because I think about even some of the games I – from having come from 40K and played a lot of 40K, I think I remember a lot more of my AOS moments because there's almost like a – there's, like, a deeper grandio- like grandioseness mm-hmm. to it or something. Like, there's always, like, that one thing that, like, flips in your mind. Like, maybe it's a priority <laughs> role or, like, in the case of, like, one of my last games at Tampa, I remember, like – my Leviathan just like barely survived and it had just enough speed to like make it to his like his uh gloom spite shrine and then <laughs> just smashed it and he's just like yep you got me and i was just like oh because <laughs> i was white knuckling it through that one too yeah. he double turned me with gloom Come spite on. gifts oh my 
Oh, so good. I mean, I guess I find, like, unless it's a real juicy priority, like, they all kind of blend together for me a little bit. But, That's fair. I mean, at that point in time, it was just, like, the the key to winning there was, like, popping skeletons out outside of three and bringing back, like, you know, 15 and stealing objectives from people. So it was just, like... Oh, you think you're gonna do that? <laughs> Just kidding. I'm coming in on your movement, and I'm gonna screw up your battle tactic. Like <laughs> one word, but two syllables: grave sights. Yeah, <laughs> everywhere. And heroes now. On the heroes and mm -hmm. the oh, the reoccurring. Yeah, I remember picking up the book and reading through that, and just been like, "There's summonable. There's summonable on some of these. Uh, on some of these heroes, they can literally just pop themselves back up, just like you thought you killed me." Oh yeah, I wasn't even gonna bring that list and. My buddy John called me like, like a day before like the final submission for the list came out, and he was just like, "Dude, you've been practicing with this. You've done well. Just bring that list. Just like, why would you change it up at this point? Just bring the list. It's a good list. The book is broken. Just go for it. <laughs> the book is broken. Just <laughs> it turns out it was <laughs> doesn't doesn't matter. Doesn't matter whatsoever. You just you just bring whatever yeah. makes you feel good. That's fair. Look, I still played good. Oh, not, you did. You did know. I, I having watched watched. I've watched the games. Good. Like, he's good. It's, it's like the book doesn't do the weightlifting for him. It's it's very different. It's very just different. Just just a little bit. <laughs> just a little lifting. In, 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 in Espanol, un poco. <laughs> in Espanol. Um, but so kind of to like transition. So that's where you kind of secured the golden ticket. Let's talk about the event itself, Warhammer yeah. Worlds. Because I remember, I remember when they announced how they were going to do that and everything like that, like with the ticketing system and even just kind of thinking, like when I saw your post while you were there, like the fact that you played, you played how many games? Was it eight games? Eight games, yeah. Eight games. I, like, especially like it didn't matter if you were like top eight. It didn't matter if you were like top whatever. Like you played eight games of warhammer yeah like how how did that feel coming off of that i mean five games <laughs> exhausting <laughs> yes five games over two days is like thumbs up i can i can get to that second day and be okay but if like i got to day number two and they were just like all right now for round six i'd be like crap yeah it was i mean day three was the most exhausting for sure um but i did have some really fun games i mean at a certain point it was like you know, I, I ended up not doing so great in that term. Like, I I went three and five. Yeah. But, you know, it's like looking around, there's, like, top ten players in the world that are also sitting right next to me at the low ends of the table. So it's like, you know, spirits don't get that low. No, you get, yeah, you can't feel that bad. It's it's like going to a, like, golf tournament and, like, Tiger Woods is sitting next to you. You're just like, hey, man, we're having a, we're having a heck of a time, oh, huh? Yeah. And you're just like, I sympathize. I also have won something yeah. once. <laughs> But yeah, I mean, like that last day, like my best game all weekend. Uh, Brian Lofton, he was playing his Blades of Corn, and him and I went against each other, and he was just like, we both just came out of like super sweaty, intense matches, and like we like sit down, and he's like, "Hey man, are you here to win? Because like I'll just give it to you. I'm, I just want to have fun." I was like, "I just want to have fun too, man. Like we're duking it out for like <laughs> the last thirty percentile. Like who cares right now?" So. <laughs> <laughs> he like bought a bucket of beers and then i bought a bucket of beers so we like crushed like 10 beers <laughs> like that one game and it was, do it, it was a great time <laughs> that'll do it if all else fails if dice fail you beers will not beers will not <laughs> beers will not dead hopefully hopefully yeah. they're not you know not coming oh god what's next oh god <laughs> there's nowhere else to go <laughs> but yeah because i mean i th and i think that's one thing that you can always kind of connect to those are specifically even just kind of thinking that I think that's a big thing too. Like when you run into that opponent who who is there to have fun. Like that's mm -hmm. what we're here to do, period. Like we're playing a game. It's, you know, it can be intense. It can be strategic. It can be, you know, it can be competitive. But you can have fun. Like that's yeah, the You point. don't got to be a dick. No. <laughs> like you don't. Have, nowhere does it say you can be a dick. <laughs> no. Like there's no need for it. We we understand the tiny plastic soldiers. I We clearly love our tiny, tiny plastic soldiers we're not lazy yeah no i mean how, how could we not they're cool they're cool i mean nerd is in now yeah. nerd is in look look at the majesticness mm -hmm. like come on it's not just stranger things in D, &D all right it's it's not man it's, henry cavill's taking us up he is we're going straight to the moon we're going we're going straight <laughs> up and he took us all the way to amazon we'll see if it turns out all right or not the bezos 
Well, yeah, we'll try what we can do. We'll take what we can get at this point. We'll take anything. But, yeah, I mean, like, eight games has got to be just absolutely bonkers. And But also, like you said, you mean you're sitting in the room with some of the top players in the world. Oh, yeah. Like, people that we're not going to just casually bump into the street on or, you know, just like we're not going to – we're not all of a sudden just going to see Tom Guan at an RTT here <laughs> in Minnesota. I mean, if he did, that would be neat. But I mean, I just, he does hustle. <laughs> he does hustle. Boy, does that man hustle. I saw his OBR list at Tampa, and I was just like, I'm just going to stay like 10, 15 feet away because I can't get that close to greatness. <laughs> I, my inspiring presence would fail. It wouldn't work. I am humble. I am humble. I am humble. <laughs> just immediately, just Wayne's world. We're not worthy. We suck. <laughs> that was one hundred percent where that would go, and that's I'm fine with that. I accept my lots in life. I am just weird tattooed dude who started a YouTube, maybe inadvisably, but we'll work on that later. That's yeah, for, we'll find out. Yeah, you know. that that's for later <laughs> me to worry about. But either way, so we kind of talked about the experience there. Um, Obviously, you know, kind of coming to we're kind of a full circle. We're talking about all these cool memories, and you talk about even, you know, the unfortunate incident with mm-hmm. with the Kansas City stuff. But like, would would you recommend people go to these things? Oh my god, yeah, I had an absolute blast. I I went and like, you know, I've always traveled with like my close crew, and like always gone with like the team or the homies, and it's always like a great time. But this was my first event going to since my first one that I traveled to alone. And it was just like, am I going to know anyone? Am I going to connect with anyone? It's like five days long. Am I just going to be hanging out in my hotel room? And, like, it was amazing how much, like, people came out and went out of their way to, like, be like, yo, you should come sit with us. Or, like, we should go out together. And, like, I hung out with tons of people I didn't even know and went out all the time and, like, got food with people. And, in fact, I even got, like, a random roommate at one point. <laughs> was, His name was Joe. No. <laughs> He just like walked out the door. Again. He's just like, oh, hey, homie, I got your room key. Don't worry about it. Just clash on couch. Shorts and different colored <laughs> flip flops. Just... <laughs> oh, God. Oh, did we lose something? Today's video is sponsored by The Forge for all your hobby nerd needs. Whether it's Warhammer 40K, Age of Sigmar, Marvel Crisis Protocol, Magic the Gathering, Pokemon, Lorcana, and a plethora of board games, The Forge has what you need. The Forge has been my go-to shop and the inventory has only grown. If there's something you don't see on the shelves, fill out a product request form on their website. Thank you to The Forge for sponsoring this video. Mm. Alright, so we got that there. So. Suck it, Bert. No, you're just like... Oh, I'm just screwing it all up. Yeah. Ooh. Okay, cool. And we're back for a brief break there. Mm. So... Last well, one of the last questions we have here. So you know, we kind of talked about it. We talked about the positive, you know, experiences that you've had in the competitive sphere, and you just kind of like you said, you went to an event by yourself. Which, which event did you actually go to by yourself? Oh, that was the U.S. Chicago Open. But oh, that's that was when I met Joe. So oh, there you go. So perfect. Alas, yeah. I was not alone. Yeah, I mean, I I went to LVO by myself one year, and that was daunting. And like that was my first time also meeting like Vanguard Tactics on the 40k side, and they were so. Yeah. Everyone's just so lovely in the hobby. So, I mean, I think that's going to kind of answer the question even here right now is, you know, how do you feel about the competitive side and the hobby side of AOS in general right now as it stands? It's awesome. I mean, it's what keeps me going. Like, I love going to tournaments and I love, like, seeing what people do and the creativeness and, like, the kit bashing and, like, getting up to the parade level and seeing all the beautiful armies. But then also just, like, the competitive scene is so fun. It's, like, such a open and welcoming community outside of just being, like, kind of intimidating <laughs> yeah yeah it's that i think that was the biggest thing for me too is i was worried that like i was gonna run because like one of my first experiences was a 40k one and i remember having this roller coaster of an experience just like having my first opponent like slow play me to the point where we got to round two like at the end of his hours, turn round yeah. two and it was just like seriously and then the second one like i played into like a Chukari player who was just like at the time they were just shifting into the ninth edition and I was like, oh, you can't reroll ones on yourself because that was a rule that they had changed for Space Marines and Necrons at yeah. that point, but they hadn't changed it for everybody else. I was like, no, 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 you can't, you can't, <laughs> no, I can still do that. And I just like, all right, I'm just going to sit down and just uh, grow up into a ball here. Yeah. And, I'm sorry I have offended you. Yeah. It's <laughs> terrible, terrible experience. But like, yeah. and I just remember that roller coaster. And I remember my last two games being particularly nice. They were mm-hmm. super helpful and stuff like that. But even just kind of going from then to now, 
I feel like the it's been more welcoming. Yeah, in my opinion, I think also the hobby side has stepped up. Like battle ready is like less and less likely or less occurring than I think it's ever been before. Like you, when you see someone showing up at a GT with turn like with an army. It's looking nice. Yeah. Like, bases are done up. Like, there's edge highlighting. There's, like, shading. There's, like, styles to it. Like, it's it's just gorgeous. I think that's one thing that AOS does have over 40K. No offense. 40K. I play 40K. It's there. It's there. It's there. It's there. There's plenty of people that do. But you ever seen Age of Sigmar? Have you seen the displays? Have you seen the models? Even 40K admits that Age of Sigmar wins the models. It's okay. Have you ever seen a lizard riding a dinosaur with space equipment that came down from a flying freaking Aztec temple? And that's what's gonna. That's what. Yeah. That's the only thing that Bert. The Bert's gonna send me an edit, yeah. and it's just gonna be that. Just us. <laughs> God damn it! Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's fair though. It's fair. It's perfect. It's perfect. And so you know, kind of we talked about like the positive like nature of the hobby, like how far it's grown and everything else. I mean, like. Mm-hmm. Is there anything in particular that you're kind of excited for, like either event wise or just even like in the hobby in general? I mean, we we sat next to each other at LVO talking to like Army Painter and got to mess with like brand new paints that you know the yeah. War Paints fanatic stuff like that, and just kind of like we're just chilling there with like some of the top painters in the world, and you know even just like it's just so communal and it's yeah. just it's just so relaxing too. It's just so nice to see what you can do, like and just connect with people that like share the same passion for the hobby that you love. Like, it's like you sit down and it's, you can just talk. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how elevated or, like, where you hold someone. Like, at the same time, you have no idea. the same thing. Yep, you have no things. idea who that person is. You don't know their life story or anything. But the moment that they, like, look at your army, look at your models, or look at what you're painting, they're just like, yeah, dude. And then you just go off on an hour and a half tangent, and you're just like, did we just become best friends right now? Oh, yeah. I mean, like, I have people that I'm connected with on Instagram and, like, all over the world that I've kept up with over the last two years or like people that are like, are you going to Adepticon? Are you going to this? Like, it'd be great to see you. Let's grab a beer. Like, it, yeah, it's just awesome. Like, I don't know any of these people, but like we're friends. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I mean, even, friends, even, I guess, even but... this, even this coincidental meeting was just, you know, coming from the idea of like trying to help, uh, the forge. Ta-da. Uh, you know, find an AOS team. And I knew I, like, had talked to Joe once or twice. I didn't know much about him. All I knew is he played Age of Sigmar. I did not know how much at the time. I was was unsure until until I found out. As we say in Spanish, un poco. Un poco. (laughs) He plays un poco Age of Sigmar. Um, But, like, like now being part of Icy Dice and doing that stuff, like, that literally just Mm -hmm. came about because I was like, all right, I know this one dude who plays Age of Sigmar. Maybe he knows some people. He's like, yeah, I got a regular crew. And then I met all of you guys. And it's just, it's always cool to have more friends, right? Like, oh, yeah. It's as, as, as realistic. It's what we should be here for, right? It was making friends, you know, engaging in the hobby, engaging in, uh, you know, in the game and stuff like that. And it's just. In our community. I mean, that's yeah. one of the best things about our team is like we started running a lot of RTTs and GTs. We've got like more local events now that are getting like a good pull. Like, it's exciting to see where it could go in this next year and what we're going to do and what our community is going to do. And Yeah, we went from one RT, one RTT a year, maybe, maybe, maybe and that was a gamble. Maybe to, four GTs to now two. So yeah. it's like. Oh, yeah, and I, and I remember too, like ironically of all things, I got further into 40K competitive side, but my first 2,000 point game was Seraphon 2nd Edition, down at the Dork Den in Mankato where I met my friend Noah, which is another one of those groups. Like, mm-hmm. I know all those guys now because I went to a tournament by myself. They bought pizza and stuff. And I remember Noah just being like, dude, if you want some pizza. Like, I was like, oh, sure. This is it. I've made it. Yeah, just like <laughs> waddling over all weird and nervous. I'm just like, I was like, I'm a weird 27-year-old who's just moving around tiny plastic lizards with a bunch of people. And I can have fun and get pizza. I can get both. This is great. And just, yeah, it's it's it is crazy how all that stuff like really comes together and like how it all works and i mean uh, i think my even my fiance can like back it too like she's seen me get into stuff and then like fall out of it and get back in and i mm-hmm. and i think even at that time she thought like okay like how far is he gonna go into this i bought my stark 
collecting Dark Angels box and like a box of Deathwing for Dark Angels. And now I have 14 armies. I was going to say, yeah, like 50 boxes later, she's like, oh, God, he's still committed. Yeah, she's, oh, God. Yeah, it's, now it's just like, okay. so Second like, mortgage. Yeah, well, it's just, you know, we have like, th- I have like six shelves just filled with stuff that will not fit in a tote because it's too tall. Because I guess a zombie dragon has to be like, yeah. and just like take up like retail. All of the space. Yeah. All the space. We, we so curr- big wings. It big oh, it's a Drake. That was that was actually my test for my carrying case is can I transport my vampire lord on zombie dragon because his spear is pointed straight up. Oh, you got to put a magnet right up his butt and then put one on the that's, seat see? and then you can take him on and off. I, I should have thought about that, but I didn't. Yeah. And so instead <laughs> I took the magnetizing plate under the table war one and I was just like, all right, if I just shimmy him under, okay, his spear sits straight up. It's just... I lost this much retail in the actual case on the second floor, but it doesn't matter. Yeah. Fits. It fits. So. If he fits, it sits. <laughs> and then just, you know. If he it, sits and fits? And si- if he sits and fits. That's, yeah. that's a fair point, yeah. yeah. If, I, if I was smarter now, that arm would be pointed straight down. The wings would be like this, so the like spikes are just pose, fit. Yeah. yeah, just like straight down, like knuckle dragging it, like the whole, the yeah. whole thing. But anyway, Mr. Andrew. Thank you for Thanks. thank you for coming on and doing. Thanks this for interview. having me. Yeah, this was fantastic. I just you know I figured you know since this is a is a goal of mine whether or not it is achieved or not this year you know there's always next year. I believe. I'd, pff, Unless we're playing against each other, then you know. Then, then it's so. done. <laughs> I'll meet you in the ring. Hope you like losing. <laughs> just let Randy my I got you for three minutes. <laughs> three minutes of pain time. <laughs> oh yeah. Bone saws ready. Oh god. <laughs> <laughs> Man down. It's, no yeah, one can do take, how take does, a step there. How yeah. does how does he do that for that long? Drugs, cocaine. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and we've officially been demonetized. No, <laughs> no. <laughs> that would imply that I was making money to begin with. So this is this is completely fine. Wait, we're not doing that. We are not doing. No, that's true. Macho Man is. Ma- it was the eighties. It yeah. was a different time yeah. then. It was a different time then. But again, <laughs> thanks for coming on again. You, if you want to check out his work, which I'm just going to put this out there right now, when you check out his work, yeah, you're when. just going to when just go down into the description and just check it out. And there, I should have a link in there that'll actually lead you to all his work. Take a look at all his stuff. Also, because his his stuff is fantastically, you know, you have fantastic pictures of your stuff as well. I, j- I just do my cheapo reels of rotating it and picking whatever I'm listening to at the time. I've gotten progressively better over the last year. Maybe some of the earlier ones when I had my mouse pad backdrop that's full of like pet hair and, <laughs> and stuff. That's those aren't the best ones, but, but hey, it was you, better than two you, years ago. You work with what you got. Yeah, you, I mean, you live and learn. I mean, it's better than just like I'll post like some scary, crazy like nothing like just disgusting monster and then it'll just be to like the tune of you can call me al by <laughs> friggin paul simon and it's just like what is, is he saying is this dude's name si- be my is- <laughs> i'll be uh... yep, yeah, there you go. <laughs> that one. and this is why i paint miniatures instead of singing this is important we're this just listening to metal it's you know, just so. all, all the metal all the metal i've been i've been thoroughly enjoying that as well but again <laughs> check out his stuff down in the description and of course we are at of course, as per uh, as per always, always sponsored by The Forge. For all your hobby nerd needs, swing on down to The Forge. They got what you need, and if they don't have what you need, they can order it for you. That's a really nice thing about the internet. It zooms right in, and they do the and they do the best they can with that. So, um, I think that'll do us from here. So, you know, I've been tattooed tabletop. Get, come here, come here. Yeah, look at us. Look at us. Go paint something. Go. Do something or build, 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 build paint. paint. Do some, do something. Maybe Maybe some the, old lines, you know, whatever it takes. This is the call to action that they talk about when it comes to these sort of things. It's this, mm-hmm. and of course, like and subscribe, please. I beg of you, I beseech you. Do it. This microphone sounds good. Do it now. Do it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I've been tattoo tabletop. Go paint something. All the nonsense.